Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer for Thursday, the 21st of May, the feast of St. Eugene de Mazenod. Eugene died on this day in 1861. Today, we celebrate his life and give thanks for our congregation, the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, which he founded. I am Oliver Barry, Provincial of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate. Father Louis Logan, in his letter written for today, tells us, two years ago, one of our pre-novices expressed this thought. The Oblates are not a congregation of the past. It's one of the present and future. And even more so, considering the world today, we were born for times like this. Isn't there a spark of St. Eugene de Mazenod in these words? We were born for times like this. A period of fear, anxiety, confusion and uncertainty, in which the most abandoned, the poorest, suffer the greatest hardship. And at the same time, a period offering new insights, new possibilities, new challenges, calling us drastically to wake up and care for our common home and its peoples. Over these last few months, our lives have changed dramatically. We've been challenged by the presence of the deadly COVID-19 virus on our planet. At the present time, we are beginning the process of unlocking the controls with which we have been living over these last few months. Where is the good news in all that has happened? We hear it in the first letter of John. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. Where have I witnessed love during these days? I've seen it in those who care for the sick and vulnerable in an unselfish way. I've seen it in the willingness to self-isolate and cocoon in order to keep others safe. I've seen it in those who are willing to help in the simplest ways in order to make life a little easier for others. I've seen it in the willingness to depend on the patience and generosity of one another. The good news needs to be lived and proclaimed. During these days, we pray that we might experience the good news, to be able to share it with others. For Eugene, Good Friday was the culmination of a conversion journey, the moment of realization that from the cross, Jesus was gazing at him with mercy and asking him to follow him. It was when Eugene understood that God loved him. It was because of this experience that we understand why the Oblate Cross became the focal point of Eugene's life and mission. Eugene was clear about the good news he proclaimed when he said to the poor of Marseille, You are the poor of Jesus Christ the sick and suffering, those covered with sores, all of you whom misery overwhelms, my brothers and sisters, listen to me. You are children of God, the very brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, co-heirs of his kingdom. You are kings, you are priests, you are, yes, in a certain way, gods. So lift up your heads for once, let your eyes look inward and see through the rags you wear. You are more precious before God than all the riches of the world, than all the kingdoms of the earth, a people about whom God is more concerned than all the governments of the entire world. Therefore, O Christian, recognize your dignity. Today, can we reflect on our encounter with the person of Christ? and on our call to share that encounter with others. We listen to the reading from the first letter of John.
Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. The words of the heart of that reading that strike me are, this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. How has God loved me? God provides the air I breathe, keeps my heart beating, sustains the life I live. God loves me into life. The good news is to be alive. Jesus came and said, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. That's the good news we are called to share with others in these difficult days. Can we take a few moments of quiet just to thank God for my life? To thank God for those I love. To pray for those in need. To pray for an end to the present crisis. We make these prayers with the help of Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We finish with a prayer to St. Eugene. Loving Saviour, we thank you for the life and intercession of St. Eugene de Massino. Accompanied by his prayers, we bring to all our personal intentions, and those of our loved ones, especially the sick and suffering. We ask also that you inspire many generous persons to follow St. Eugene's missionary example by dedicating their lives to being the saviors, cooperators like you were. We ask all this with loving confidence. Amen. During these days, the Oblate Digital Communications has offered morning and night prayers on close to 100 occasions. I would like to thank all who have made this possible. It has been a means of offering support, of being present to one another, and reaching out across borders. I invite those who have supported this effort to continue to do so so that the good news can continue to be shared with all in these difficult days. We finish with a prayer to St. Eugene de Massimo. Loving Saviour, we thank you for the life and intercession of St. Eugene de Massimo. Accompanied by his prayers, we bring to you all our personal intentions and those of our loved ones especially the sick and suffering. We ask also that you inspire many generous persons to follow St. Eugene's missionary example by dedicating their lives to being the Saviour's cooperators like you were. We ask all this with loving confidence. Amen.